Setting suspension sag is the very first step in setting up any bike suspension. Do you know how to check and adjust sag? I'll show you how in this video from the MC Garage. The amount the suspension compresses under the weight of the rider is called rider sag or laden sag. An easy way to think about sag is as a measure of how much suspension travel is available to extend down into dips like potholes. Setting sag ensures that your rake, trail, ride height, and other important factors are within the right range, and it's also a great way to determine whether or not your springs are right for your weight. As a general rule, sag should be about one-third to one-fourth of total suspension travel. That typically works out to about 30 to 40 millimeters for most sport bikes, nakeds, and sport tours. To measure sag, you'll need the bike, the bike's rider in full gear, a notepad and pen, a tape measure, preferably a metric one, and any tools needed to adjust your bike's front and rear preload. If you have a front wheel chalk, that's gonna be really helpful. Otherwise, plan on working next to a wall so the rider can reach over and balance himself while you take some measurements. I'll be demonstrating the race tech method of checking suspension sag. It's a little more involved, but I feel it's a lot more accurate because it takes into account drag within the suspension components. Start with the front of the bike. You need to measure the suspension fully extended. If your bike has a center stand, that's pretty easy. If your bike doesn't have a center stand, ask your rider to carefully lean the bike over on the side stand so that the front wheel is off the ground. Then measure the exposed portion of the lower fork leg. If your bike has a right side up fork, measure from the axle to the lower triple clamp. Write this number down and mark it as L1. So first we're gonna press down on the suspension and then let it rise slowly. This is gonna be our L2 measurement. And once again, you're measuring the exposed fork slider. So we've got 87 millimeters, writing that down as L2. Next, I'm going to lift up on the front of the bike and then let it settle gently. And once again, measure. This is gonna be our L3, 97 millimeters. If there was no drag or friction within the fork, L2 and L3 would be the same, but because of the fork seals and the bushings, there's a little bit of drag, and that's why I've got a difference between those two figures. Now, let's do a little math to find out what the sag figures actually are. You need to average L2 and L3, and then subtract that figure from L1. So the total equation is L1 minus L2 plus L3 divided by two. For this particular bike, that's 43 millimeters. That's a little more than we're after. So we're gonna add some preload in order to bring the sag figures into the appropriate range. Adjusting the preload on this Yamaha R1 is pretty easy. You just have to turn the adjusters on the top of the fork here. Your bike will likely differ, so check your owner's manual to see if and how your preload is adjustable. With the sag set on the fork, we're now gonna check the rear sag. Roll the bike out of the stand, and just like we did with the fork, have your rider lean the bike over so that you can get an L1 fully extended measurement. Measure from the axle to an obvious point on the tail. Here we've got a little painted graphic. This is your L1 measurement for the rear. Now to get your L2 and your L3 measurements, you need to put the bike back in the wheel chalk and have the rider get back in position. Once again, push down on the bike and allow it to rise slowly and then remeasure. This is your L2 measurement. Then lift up on the bike and allow it to settle and measure again. This is L3. And just like we did with the front, you're gonna average L2 and L3 and subtract that figure from L1. This is your rear rider sag. If your bike's rear sag needs to be adjusted, check your owner's manual to see how that's done. And it's always a good idea to write down any changes that you make. If you're unable to nail your sag figures with the adjustments available on your bike, that's a good indication that your spring rates are off. If you've maxed out preload and you still have too much sag, that's a sure sign that you need stiffer springs. On the other hand, if you've pulled all of the preload out and you still have too much sag, your springs are too stiff. The ideal setup will have very little preload to achieve the desired sag figures. And listen, despite what anyone says, adding preload does not stiffen a spring. Rather, it changes the amount of force required to initiate spring movement and the total force required to fully compress or bottom the suspension component. In essence, changing the preload alters the effective range of the spring stroke that is used. Okay, hopefully this video has shed some light on the dark art of suspension tuning. If you wanna know more, we've got several articles on the topic at MotorcyclistOnline.com. Now go check your SAG and check back in two weeks for more tips from the MC Garage.